Hello AP Statistics students. In this video we are continuing to look at the binomial random variables, all right, binomial probabilities. And we're going to look at how to do these on the calculator now so we don't have to continue doing them by hand. Now there are right now two um, functions in the calculator that we're going to look at. The binomial PDF and the binomial CDF. All right, they do two different things and they're important to be able to use both of them. All right, so the first one, the binomial PDF, is the probability density function. All right, that's what the PDF stands for. Now, what the heck does that mean? That means you're getting a single probability. All right, what is the probability that your random variable x or whatever it is is equal to a single number like seven so what are the probability of getting seven successes in your trials so if you need a single probability you want the binomial pdf if you want multiple probabilities combined you want to add them together that's this other one so this one stands for the binomial cumulative density function. If I could spell the word density. There we go. So this is if you want multiple probabilities added together. So let's say I want to know the probability of having more than seven successes. I would use the binomial cumulative density function. Now every calculator kind of uses a different acronym for these. I think the 84 actually says binomial PDF and the um, binomial CDF. But I think the Casio and the 89, I think they give you some sort of acronym. Um, I think BCF or BDF, they shorten it a little bit. But you should look for the the C for cumulative and the P for probability oftentimes. So let's take a look at how to use these. Um, I gave you some links to some other YouTube videos to really show you how to where to find those because I can't pull up every calculator right now. I want to go over more of the problem solving aspect. So if you haven't watched those, hit pause, go watch the videos for where those buttons are then come on back. All right, let's take a look at this first problem here. Free lunch. I would love some free lunch. A local fast food restaurant is running a draw a three get it free lunch promotion. That's catchy. After each customer orders, a touchscreen display shows the message press here to win a free lunch. The computer program then simulates one card being drawn from a standard deck. If the chosen card is a three, the customer's order is free. Otherwise, the customer must pay the bill. So on the first day of the promotion, 250 customers place the lunch order. Find the probability that fewer than 10 of them find or get a free lunch. So we are finding the probability that fewer than 10 X is less than 10. Now to do that, we have to interpret that if it's less than 10, that means it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So this is actually going to be the probability that x is less than or equal to 9. And we need to do that um, interpretation because every calculator always has inclusive un um, limits. And so we have to use the 9 in this case and not the 10 when we type this into the calculator. But even before there, we should at least give a nod to the idea of, is this actually a binomial problem? I mean, right now it obviously is, yes, but in the future you are gonna have to decide, is this binomial, is this normal, is this geometric, or is this something else? So, bins, is this a binary option? Yes, you either get a three or you don't, all right? Is it independent? 
are each of these card drawings independent? Because they're only drawing one card, yes, it is. Okay, now, drawing from a deck of cards can be iffy for independence. If they continue drawing cards from the same deck, that would be a problem because once you draw one card and if you draw another one, well, the total cards is different now. When you drew the first card, there were 52 possibilities. There's 52 cards in the deck. But if you don't put it back, the second card now only has 51 possibilities. Okay, there's 51 cards left. That changed the probability. So if it changed the probability, they wouldn't be independent. So you got to be a little careful with drawing um, playing cards. If you want them to be independent, you always got to draw a card and then put it back. Thankfully, we're only drawing one card, so we are definitely having independence here. All right, N, the number of trials has to be set. Is that true? Yes, we are doing 250 customers. We know how many cards we're or how many times we are doing this, 250 times. Is the probability the same all the time? Well, if we're drawing a three out of a deck of cards, yes. Um, now, deck of cards, there's 52 cards, but four of those are threes. There's the hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs, right? Four of those are threes. So the probability is four out of 52. And it's always four out of 52 because each person supposedly gets a new digital deck. Um, but again, that denominator would change if we were drawing multiple cards and not replacing them. But we don't have to worry about that. So it satisfied all of bins. We're good to go with the binomial. Now, which binomial to choose? I want to know the probability of all the possibilities below 9, and including 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. I'm adding multiple ones, so I want the binomial cumulative density function. All right? So we want the binomial CDF. All right, so now find that on your calculator and then we just got to plug everything in. So I've got two common screens here from the 84 and the uh, Casio. So first we input the number of trials, it's 250. The probability is four out of 52. And yes, you can just do the fraction four divided by 52. It'll convert it to the decimal for you. And then the X value, nine. Hit enter, hit enter and it will tell you that probability. Now, if you have the Casio, one slight change. The Casio is kind of nice. It gives you a lower and an upper option. So because we want less than or equal to nine, it's gonna be from zero to nine. The 84 always goes from zero, a lower of zero, to the upper, of whatever you put okay you don't get the choice to change the lower if you have a ti-84 sadly which will make a few other problems have an extra step um, but if you have a casio just make sure you put in zero for that lower right now because we do want from zero all the way up to nine hit enter a couple of times until you get your answer which will be i've got mine plugged in already Hit enter. All right, what number is that? Remember, that is scientific notation. So we've got a point, a negative three power. That means we move the decimal point three times. So that will be point zero zero six one two. So that'll be point zero zero six one two is our probability. So when you report this, you do need to write out all of this okay to report out your answer you need to have all of that so one way to do that you could be binomial cdf remember how you do this with normal cdf you could put trials 250 
probability of success, 4 out of 52, and x is equal to 9. Uh, if you have the CASO, you might even add lower, upper, um, would be 9. Hit enter, and then that gives you 0 0.00612. So there is less than a 1% chance that 10, or sorry, fewer than 10 get a free lunch. All right, letter B. In fact, only nine customers want a free lunch that day. What? Does this result give convincing evidence that the, pro, the computer program is flawed? So yes, yes it does. Yes, this does give us convincing evidence the program is flawed because there should be less than a 1% chance of this happening All right by the binomial there is a 0.6% chance of having less than 10 winners. And so if we got nine, yeah, there's a less than a 1% chance of happening. All right, so that's the binomial CDF there. Let's try a few more with this. So what is the probability of getting exactly 20 winners on the first day of this promotion. I'm hoping you see the difference there. Exactly 20 winners. I'm only looking for a single probability this time. I'm looking for the probability that x is equal to exactly 20. Well, that is not a cumulative density function. That's just the probability function. So that's going to be the binomial PDF, just the probability density function. And the things you type in are much the same. You have to put in the number of trials, which is 250. You have to put in the probability for success, which is still 4 out of 52. And you still have to put in the x value we are checking, x equals 20 in this case. But now, if you do the PDF version, it will not add up from 0 to 20. It will just give you the value for 20 alone. So I'll do that really quick here on the Casio, but it's very similar for everybody. So I'm going to go to distribution, binomial. So here you can see it's BPD, whatever acronym your calculator uses, but it stands for binomial probability density function. So I tell it my x value in this case is 20. My number of trials is still 250. And my probability didn't change, so I still had that in there. So that is a 9.1% chance, 0 0.091. So there's a nine about a 9.1% chance of getting exactly 20 winners. All right, one more. What is the probability of getting more than 20 winners? All right, more than 20 winners, that is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 20. Oh, sorry, not equal to, huh, my bad. Not equal to, because I just said more than 20. So that'd be 21, 22, 23, 24, everything above 20. So hopefully you can see I'm adding up multiple ones. So that will be a binomial CDF, cumulative density function. So number of trials is still 250. Uh, the probability is 4 out of 52 still. All right, I'm going to go with the Casio here. I, I'm going to put the lower 
So remember your calculator includes the limits. So I don't want to put 20 in here because I am not including 20. I am actually starting at 21. That's the first limit that I am including is 21. Upper, how high do we go? Well, the most we could ever have is 250. Now that's a little bit different from normal distributions, isn't it? You can't just put an obnoxiously big number here. Okay, you have to put in the highest possible and that is the number of trials here, 250. We could never have more than 250 winners. There were only 250 people. So I'll type that in to get my answer. So uh, exit, exit, distribution, binomial, cumulative density. Oops, go down. So I want to start at 21. And then I want upper is 250. Trials 250, probability, I can just hit enter. So I get 37%, 0.37. Now, if you have a TI-84, it's not quite that easy, okay? Because what we just did, if I have my density function here, it's not normal, but so let's say it looks something like this. I just found the area from 21 all the way up to 250. I found this area right here. The 84 cannot find areas to the right. It just doesn't. It only finds areas to the left. All right. So what we have to do, if we want an area to the right, we have to use the complement rule and do one minus area of the left. Oh, sorry, yeah, area to the left. Because remember, the whole thing has to add up to one, 100%, right? The whole thing has to add up to one. So if we want the area on the right, we have to simply take one minus the area on the left. That will leave us with the area on the right. So what we have to do with an 84 is do one minus the binomial CDF trials 250 probability 4 out of 52. Now we don't do a lower and a higher because it always does the area to the left. And so we are going to do x equals, now here's the tricky part, 20. All right, we don't want to include 21, this bar or this amount for 21, in the part that we are subtracting off. We want to keep it in the part to the right. So we want to get rid of 0 through 20. Okay? So if you imagine all the numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3, 19, 20, 21, 22, etc., etc., we want to do 1 minus all the ones we don't want. We want to get rid of this one, this one, this one, this one. We want to get rid of this one and this one. We don't want to get rid of 21. We only want to get rid of up to 20. So you type that, you would type this into your calculator, get the number, and then write that number down somewhere, and then just do one minus that number, and you will again get 0.37. So if you have an 84, you do have that one extra step. You have to use the complement rule. If you are trying to do an area on the right side, it's just one minus the stuff on the left. And we all have to be careful of the limits. We all have to be careful of the limits. You just have to think through, do I want to include this number? 
Do I want to subtract this number? Et cetera, et cetera. All right, and I think writing it out, this is one strategy the book has, writing it out like this is one good way, all right? If you are going to subtract it and you crossed it out, that's your limit. If you don't cross it out and you want to keep it, then that's your limit. Hopefully that makes some sense. Try the practice problems out in the book. Check them with a the calculator. Maybe do a few by hand. I hope that helps.